Did you know Southwestern Montana is a podcast featuring myself, Jeremy Crawford, with my co-host, Wally Felt. Wally and I will pick a subject in history of Southwestern Montana news. We will research it and then discuss it. We hope you enjoy the show. Well, good day, everyone. Uh, Wally Felt here along with my partner in crime, Jeremy Crawford, and an overdue edition of Did You Know Southwestern Montana? And we kind of apologize a little bit with uh, with our uh, space between segments. Uh, we've been kind of uh, bounding around trying to figure out exactly what we want to do. And with the amount of uh, history in southwestern Montana, it's, uh, I won't say overwhelming, um, it's, but like you and I said uh, one day, is we, just, we just need to be a little more a little more serious about uh, narrowing in on subjects and then just do them and then just move on from there. And we are uh, a little bit late, but uh, this is very important. We want to cover that. We want to look at uh, Memorial Day and the observances in southwestern Montana. Uh, you and I are, are both uh, true patriots at heart, and uh, we were kind of commenting the changes in Memorial Day um, and it's it's just really I mean our our uh, town is uh, about what 120 years old something like that yeah and, and it's it's kind of fun to trace how Memorial Day was observed yeah you know we can kind of see from the beginning which you know uh, Memorial Day was originally um, it was started after the Civil War. And it wasn't called Memorial Day, and we'll get into that in a little while. And basically is what it was, was the Confederate widows would go out and they would decorate the Confederate soldiers' graves. Well, and that's, you know, we talked about that before, but do you realize there's like, there's like three or four other stories going around and, and, and why they chose, why they chose it and what, and there's more interesting things because there are government uh, the Lyndon B. Johnson administration is the one that put the put the decision down on deciding where Memorial Day first originated, and it's not that accurate because what you're talking about is not where they were talking about. But once again, we don't want to get too far of ourselves. <laughs> but okay, so it was uh, as Jeremy said, it wasn't called Memorial Day; it was called decoration day now there was a proclamation by general john a logan of the grand army of the republic and that was kind of a grandiose way of saying uh, the boys in blue uh, the union forces they had their first major memorial day observance may 30th now his purpose behind it and i quote he says for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion. Now, you know that verbiage is going to be different when you get below the Mason-Dixon line because they don't call it the War of Rebellion. No. Um, But it was called Decoration Day, and mourners honored the Civil War dead by decorating their graves with flowers. Now, on that first Decoration Day, General James Garfield made a speech at Arlington National Cemetery. There were 5,000 participants helping to decorate the graves of more than 20,000 Civil War soldiers buried in the cemetery. Now, that was the first official, and we need to put quotation marks up, but not the first Memorial Day observance. No. The 1868 celebration was inspired by local observances that had taken place in various locations in the three years since the end of the Civil War. Although, after I put the initial thing together, I discovered there was actually an observance while the Civil War was still going on, which you just talked about, about the Civil, about widow, or, uh, excuse me, um, Civil, or Confederate widows. Yeah putting flowers on the graves of their fallen loved ones. And what a lot of people didn't talk about was the fact that uh, they all, the women saw, you know, they, they looked over and there was another, a smaller cemetery with union dead. And they, despite the fact their, their, their 
family was killed in the war fighting the Union, they did not think it was fair to those families of those boys that their graves were also not taken care of. So they went over and took care of the Union graves just as well. Now, several of those towns claim to be the birthplace of Memorial Day. One of the local observances occurred two years earlier. How about this? In 1866, Carbondale, Illinois, where Logan had delivered the keynote address at an April 29th Decoration Day commemoration in Carbondale, in which Union veterans paraded in tattered uniforms and spread flowers on cemetery graves. Now, several cities have claimed to be the birthplace of Memorial Day, Columbus, Mississippi, Macon, Georgia, Richmond, Virginia, Southern towns, but also there was Waterloo, New York, Bowlesburg, Pennsylvania, and Carbondale. Now, I'm not sure if you found it out. Um, there was one story going around that some freed slaves in one of these towns decorated the graves of the Union soldiers that were buried there. There's no mention of that in there anywhere. It's kind of like one of those, well, we don't need to really say anything about that. Yeah, and there is actually a little bit of controversy from something that happened over Labor Day this year with a American Legion post. And I didn't get the whole story, but I think the guy was going to talk about that, and somebody cut his mic. That's right. I remember yep. reading about that. Yeah, and they were actually reprimanded to the tune of all of because there was not just one there was two or three people involved and they were in the uh, upper echelon of this american legion post and they were all asked to resign and i think they actually shut down that post that was the last thing i heard was they were probably getting disbanded well that's that's how it should be in 1966 the federal government under the direction of president lyndon b johnson declared waterloo new york the official birthplace of memorial day You want to know the reason why? It was his hometown. (laughs) (laughs) No, he's a Texas guy. Okay. He's a Texas guy. Their logic behind the choice was simple, or so to say. Waterloo first celebrated the day on May 5th, 1866, and then made that day an annual community-wide event during which businesses closed and residents decorated the graves of soldiers with flowers and flags. So they just figured... Waterloo had the basic formula to what Memorial Memorial Day should be. And so that's designated. But, you know, these other towns we talked about, um, they all think they should have Memorial Day. And and when you read about that, a lot of other towns, in particular in the South, they called it Confederate Memorial Day. And they were all different days. Yeah. All different days. From Most of them were in the springtime. But they were all different days. Yeah, from what I'm seeing, there's 25 places that claim to have originated the holiday. And probably <laughs> the majority of they're all diff, 25 different dates, probably. Yeah, yeah too. probably 25 different dates and 25 different names. Yeah, yeah. But by the late 19th century, many communities across the country had begun to celebrate Memorial Day. The day was May 30th, and it was celebrated regardless of which of day of the week may 30th fell on and it's interesting it it's not an official well, it hasn't been an official holiday yet no but business is closed you know you know schools wear out everything yeah. so it, it's it's interest, interesting how how that worked out it's like uh, the power of the people after world war one observers began to honor the dead of all of america's wars and after world war one so we had the civil war and we had Union and Confederate. But I noticed in some of the parades, and we'll talk about that uh, a little bit when we get into Dylan's commemoration, militia. Yeah. They didn't have National Guard. They had a local militia. Yeah, they had a state militia that would and was e- basically volunteer. And everybody in each town had their own state militia. Um, after World War One, as I said, they, everything was... Um, or observers honored the dead from all of America's wars. Now, I ask you this question, and you know the answer because I've already told you, but would you, could you fathom when I ask you that question of when it became an official American holiday, did that surprise you of that date? It did surprise me um, because I always thought it was a lot later of a holiday, but 
you know, um, this is probably one of our newer holidays. It is 1971. That yeah. was the year it Congress declared Memorial Day a national holiday to be celebrated the last Monday in May. Now today, Memorial Day is celebrated at Arlington National Cemetery. I'm, this is the major national celebration with a ceremony in which a small American flag is placed on each grave and it is customary for the president or vice president to give a speech honoring the contributions of the dead and to lay a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier. And that story is a story, a fun story yeah. in itself. More than 5,000 people attend the ceremony annually. And once again, some southern states have set aside a special day for honoring the Confederate Day, Confederate Dead, which is usually called Confederate Memorial Day. So any final thoughts on a little bit of background on Memorial Day? You know, it's one of those things where it's a very interesting holiday. I mean, it's something that... Um you know, the Civil War was the first big war that the United States was in, and sadly, it was against ourselves. But, you know, it's kind of hard to believe that after that, you know, there were so many more wars before we actually decided to set it as an official holiday to honor our dad that and, fought for our country. And the one, the one thing that I was curious about, too, and I didn't dig maybe as deep as I should have, was the names or how other countries do it because i know australia has one yes. brit great britain has one Canada and i'm sure has one Fr france probably yeah. has one and so you know as as terrible war is it's it's very important that we honor those folks that uh, gave their lives to make our lives just a little bit better yeah and i mean i know that there was one country that does have one um like either right before ours or right as ours is going on um but i cannot remember the name of it well i'll tell you what while you look for that we're going to take a break and we'll be back and we'll talk about memorial day observance in dillon okay jeremy we're back and now we're going to look at memorial day through the years of dillon um, once again, our community is not very old compared to world <laughs> communities. Yeah. Uh, and it's interesting because there's, when you, when you dig into the old newspapers and stuff, there's not necessarily that many newspaper articles in the very early ones about a ceremony honoring, you know, the, the war dead. But there are lots of little columns written by people, and they're not necessarily written by Dylan people. They're just, it's like they picked, you know, yeah. a freelance writer wrote it, and they're very well written and stuff, but they don't really talk about ceremonies in Dylan. And the one that I found that one of the earliest was 1890, and I made a copy of it from the Dylan Tribune. <laughs> And it says, oh, it, headline is Memorial Day, Department Commander Ferris issues an order for its fitting observances. The following general order regarding the observance of Memorial Day has been issued by Department Commander Ed F. Ferris and received in this city. Headquarters, Department of Montana, Grand Army of the Republic, and it's Bozeman, Montana, May 4th, 1890. So he's issuing from Bozeman how the Dillon veterans are supposed to celebrate, uh, well, wrong word, observe Memorial Day. Yep. Uh, General Order Number 2, the observance of May 30th as Memorial Day with its beautiful ceremonies is one of the duties particular to our organization required by the rules and regulations and it should be performed willingly and in reverent spirit no more fitting tribute can be offered in memory of our fallen comrades than to decorate their graves with the choicest flowers of springtime entwined with the evergreen and laurel crowned with the emblems of the nation which in its hour of peril they so faithfully defended that's written very eloquently. Yes, it is. Number two, invitations should be extended to the Women's Relief Corps and Sons of Veterans where such organizations are and to all patriotic and liberty-loving citizens generally to join with us in observing the day. 
as May 30th is by law general inspection day for the Montana National Guard. And in order that they may take part in the services, post commanders will in cities where there are organized companies of Montana, Montana National Guards confer with the commanding officers of such companies and arrange the hour for the memorial ceremonies as not to interfere with the inspection. And in that same Dillon Tribune, there was a note from the post commander. There will be union, and they don't say Confederate, they, there will be union memorial services held in the Opera House, Dillon, Montana, Sunday evening, May 25th, commencing at 8 p.m. The memorial sermon will be delivered by Reverend Josh Wilkes, assisted by the pastors of the Dillon Churches of the different churches of Dillon. It is to be hoped that all of our patriotic and liberty-loving citizens will attend the service and thus per, 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 uh, the memory <laughs> of those who defended our country in its time of need and who have now answered to that last grand roll call of the supreme commander of the universe. As commander of Stedman Post Number 1, I cordially invite all soldiers, whether members of the GAR, once again, Grand Army of the Republic, or not, to join with us in the service and also the service of decorating the grave of our one comrade, May 30th at 5 p.m. So they have basically two services. They have a church service, yep. and then they have a service five days later where they decorate the graves. Where do you suppose the opera house was in Dillon? We were we talked about this once before, and I'm thinking it was where on the corner here of Montana, yeah, and uh, and uh, Helena Street, yeah, where the auto parts store is. Yep. So we're still on the search for that. So if somebody yeah, knows, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, now and moving right along. So we call our program Southwestern Montana. So I decided we'd take a little trip over to the Madison. And so in 1896, as reported in the Madisonian, the Custer Post of Sheridan, Montana, issued orders for their Memorial Day observance. And I'm not going to read it all because, as you can see, it's quite a lengthy thing. But it says here, uh, Custer Post of Sheridan issued Memorial Day orders May 22nd. Following are the orders issued by Custer Post Number 5, G.A.R., Grand Army of the Republic, for the observance of Memorial Day. Headquarters, Co Custer Post Number 5, Department of Montana, G.A.R., General Order Number 1. Comrades will assemble at Post Hall on the morning of May 30th at 9 o'clock sharp in full uniform. All soldiers who wore the blue and the gray are cordially invited. By the order of O.F. Parameter Commander G.W. Reitner Adjutant, morning exercise, the line will form on Main Street right, resting on Hamilton Street, and march to the cemetery in the following order, commanded by O.F. Parameter, and it's led by the Sheridan Silver Cornet Band, and then the Custer, Por Custer Post Number 5 GAR Post Firing Squad. <laughs> I'm thinking, okay. Do you think that was probably the squad that did the, the I'm 21 I'm thinking Color guns, Guard. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and the Color Guard. Yep. And, you know, and then, uh, uh, then the Women's Relief, Re Relief Corps. And there was quite a few. They, they talk about the Women's Relief Corps. Now, this, these are the women that served in the Civil yep. War. And there's got to be eight or nine different different branches there. Um, and then it lists uh, exercise at the cemetery will consist of the usual memorial services. And returning from cemetery, Sheridan Lodge number 20 AF, AM will take the right of line march to their respective halls and dismiss. They also had afternoon services. And they also, and during these, I'm getting, I'm getting ahead of myself here, um, at 2 o'clock, public services by the Custer Post. So one thing I've noticed about, about the early days of, of the commemoration of Memorial Day, how they, how they commemorated it, how they honored it, 
it was it was a grand affair. It, it was, was it wasn't just like let's get together for half an hour and and we'll have a talk and an, an invocation and then we'll say that's it and go put the flags on. It was a major event. Yeah, you can tell it was something that had been planned out for months before that. You know, I mean, they would coordinate because they didn't just have one post or one legion. I mean, because you can't, I don't know if they were calling them American legions back then, but they would have different posts for like the women, the men, where they served and stuff. So, I mean, all these people would come together to organize this memorial. So, I mean, you know, it was something that just was not thrown together no, at the spur no, of the moment. No. And if you think about it, they did not have a phone back then. It wasn't like they just picked up and called you. No cell service? <laughs> no cell service. In, uh, as reported in the June 4th, 1909 edition of the Dillon Tribune, Memorial Day was observ observed in Dillon both Sunday and Monday. It was a two-day affair. Memorial Day services were conducted at the Methodist Church by Reverend F. E. Dodds on Sunday, May 30th. It was reported that the services were standing room only. And that was because people got that got late could not. Yeah. And they didn't have the little loudspeaker that they could sit outside the church. Because I've, I've been to weddings and yeah. funeral services where there's so many people in the church that people say outside and yeah. listen to it. That didn't happen. Yeah, and churches back then, you know, they were designed, you know, that's why there's such an echo in a church is because that was the speaker. Was uh, When you talked, it kind of echoed out through the church, but it was also designed, it didn't go past that. So if you were outside, you were pr probably just out there to more partake in it than actually hear it because well, there would probably be no way they could hear it. Well, and when, when you look at, I mean, we visualize you know, the, when we mention towns and where, or buildings and where stuff was, we visualize them is where they are today. Yeah. And I, downtown Dillon was a lot more wide open yeah, it was, than it yeah. was, than it was then, you yeah. know? Okay. So now, um, a, after the services, members of the GAR, what's, what's GAR, Jeremy, this is a uh, grand, um, Something Republic. Grand Army of the Republic. There you go. And the WRC? The WRC is... We didn't really talk about that, so I can't... Is it the Women's? Women's Relief Repub Corps. Relief. Relief Corps. Okay. And they were all... Those were all the Civil War veterans. Then they had Spanish-American War veterans because, you know, you talked about wars coming and going. Yeah. Previously, we just talked about up until the Civil War. Well, you know what happened in 1898? They blew up the Maine and Teddy Roosevelt and the Rough Riders up San Juan Hill and everything else. And there was uh, quite a contingent of yeah. Montanans that uh, were, you know, served in that war. Um, so those veterans met in front of the courthouse and marched to the church where the seats were reserved for them. Now, the Tribune reported that Dodds preached a very able an appropriate sermon and the music was excellent. <laughs> so it's, it's funny cause you know, you, um, a critic nowadays <laughs> would be a lot more honest than I love than old news though. It's yeah. so interesting yeah. to listen to it. Like, well, it's just, it's, it's how they wrote how the such flowery language yeah. and stuff. And I mean, well, we're going to, we're going to, one of our upcoming things, we're going to talk about baseball and, and it, it's funny to listen to or to read those uh, stories a lot different, you know, and it, you almost you almost get yourself in the middle. You know, Joe Blow made a majestic throw from up to that, <laughs> but that's another story. So on Monday, May 31st, the Tribune reported that all business houses and they didn't call them stores. They called them business houses were closed at noon in observance of Decoration Day. Now, this is what I find interesting. They're calling it Memorial Day services, but right in the middle of this, they throw in Decoration Day. Yeah. And so we're still at the time where people are calling it both, and obviously both were, both were acceptable. Do you think, too, it's kind of because they would decorate the graves and then they would hold a memorial service? Do you think that maybe they called it Decoration Day, A, because they decorate the graves? So that, it's kind of like a two-part thing, and then 
Memorial was the memorial services held that day. That's that's probably a pretty lot. That's probably it. But it never says that. It yeah. Never say, you know, it's 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 because you know that where it talks about the two, it says was originally called Decoration Day. But yeah. that that actually makes perfect sense. Perfect sense. Um, so the Memorial Day exercises on Monday were conducted at the Methodist Church. And uh, the GAR, the WRC, and the Spanish American War veterans this time met at the public school grounds where they were joined by school children and teachers and led to the church by the Dillon Brass Band. First time we've heard of them. I thought they would kind of pop in a little sooner than that. Now, the trip reported that there was a line of people, each carrying a small American flag that stretched three blocks you know, from the school to the church. And the reporter noted it was truly an inspiring sight. And I imagine, yeah, yeah, I imagine. Now, the address for the Monday service was given by Reverend A.F. Culver, pastor of the Baptist Church, and he gave his address to another standing room only crowd. Culver's speech was reported to be one of the best addresses ever given in Dillon. I haven't heard a bad, I haven't had a bad review yet. <laughs> uh, in the afternoon, the groups marched to the Mountain View Cemetery where the graves of not only departed soldiers, but nearly all other graves were beautifully decorated with large quantities of flowers, ferns, evergreens, and American flags. The day was reported as ideal ones with clear skies and balmy weather prevailing. Now, before we move on, uh, talk one talk a little bit about our Mountain View Cemetery. It was uh, listed by numerous historians as being one of the best in Montana honoring the fallen soldiers of the Civil War. And they said, uh, and I'm quoting an article out of the Great Falls Tribune a number of years ago, what is most striking about Mountain View Cemetery is its attention to veterans and the number of former Union soldiers buried within the cemetery. The standardized U.S. Army shield grave marker with the soldier's name and his unit listed is found in abundance at Mountain View through the older parts of the cemetery. Now, you you spent some time. You're going to be talking a little bit later yeah. on about the most recent Memorial Day ceremonies. Um, and you said you wanted to kind of go out and explore. Uh, did you know that was called the American Legion plot? That's I did. That's the exact yeah. name. Yeah. Yeah. And I know the, uh, you know, they replaced the memorial up there a couple of years ago. And I think the old one might have even called it that, if I remember right. The soldier statue. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They had a great, I believe they had a great harvest bread day yeah. that raised the funds for that. So um, the most remarkable, now continuing, the gentleman said the most remarkable tribute to the veterans at Mountain View Cemetery comes from the mid 20th century, a somber tree line path to veterans from more recent wars heralded by a statue calling for freedom, honor, and justice, values that drove those federal soldiers in the Civil War and values that our veterans today take into fields of conflict around the world. Thank you, all veterans, for your service to our nation. So it's nice, to, it's nice that it stands out that yeah. way. Um, and I know um, I, I was talking with my, my coffee clatch this morning, and I was telling them what we were doing, and they had mentioned they thought there was the, the v, either the VFW or the American Legion was coming out with new markers that really designated Civil War soldiers and Spanish-American War soldiers. They were a lot more specific. But it's interesting when you read those the white, the white gravestones out there, and they're hard to read. They are. They are hard to read, but they'll say, for example, Jeremy Crawford, 5th Regiment, 7th Illinois. Yeah. And it's, and it's interesting to read that because yeah. the Civil War, in my mind, w- is still in the history book. Yeah. And, you know, there's, uh, you know, we have the veterans plots out there, but they are also mixed in with, you know, their family plots. So, I mean, like, when you go up there on Memorial Day, you can actually see, like, you already see this vast expanse of graves in the veterans section. 
but then they go ahead and they put a flag on the veterans' graves that aren't in there also. And it really opens up your eyes to seeing how many of these people actually served in some form for our country. Yes, and we thank them for that. And we're going to take another break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to kind of go through the years, not all the years because we have 120 (laughs) of them, but talk about a couple two or three or four of uh, some of the ceremonies, the Memorial Day ceremonies in Dillon. And well, as we get back to looking at uh, Memorial Day observances in Dillon, we go back to May 30th, 1903. All businesses agreed to close between 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. Now, veterans gathered at the bandstand, and I, I can't find out, I, I have trouble finding out where the bandstand was. Yeah. But they gathered at the bandstand, and, and our Legion post was called the Stedman Post. And once again, the veterans, the GAR, the WRC, Stedman number 11. So the WRC had their own post title, Spanish American War Veterans. And now this enters in, for the first time, Area Militia or National Guard. But they called them Area Militia and local school children. That group would march to the Dillon Theater. Remember where the Dillon Theater was? From our theater days? It was right over here, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. Yep. For services. So Reverend Dr. Martin, now that's an interesting, the paper said he was not a reverend or a doctor, he was a reverend doctor. <laughs> Martin gave the invocation, Reverend S.D. Hooker. And I think, didn't Reverend Hooker, didn't he have something to do with the library too, as I remember? He did. Or his wife had maybe had a lot to do with it? Yes. Well, he read the Gettysburg Address. That was, that's what he did at the services. And Reverend R.P. Smith gave the main address. Afterward, the groups marched to the cemetery where the graves of all Union, Confederate, Spanish-American War, and other veterans, as well as the friends and relatives of private citizens, will be decorated. Now, this just goes to show that it's, it is moving away from being a strictly, you know, honoring the war dead. Yeah. We're looking at all our family members. In 1921, part of the festivities included the unveiling of a new American flag at the courthouse, In 1925, area businesses sponsored patriotic messages in the Dillon Tribune, and I happen to have a couple of them. The Tribune Publishing Company said it was called Memorial Day Worthy of Trust. Services without regard to personal safety or gain is deserving of all honor and reverence we can bestow. Our soldiers of all wars gave such service freely They gave to us one of the greatest nations in the world. Ours is sacred duty today. We have ideals of government, of the people, by the people, for the people to sustain. In our giving, let us not forget that those before us did not falter when their duty called. We are proud to honor those brave souls, small as acts and thoughts may be, the mere pausing annually to place a flower, a flag, and utter a prayer of thankfulness. Let it be worthy of the trust given us. That was Memorial Day in 1925. Here's one that was in 1918. I, I had my order arranged, but it was basically the same thing. 1918, they, the Elio brothers, and there's a little, uh, no photograph, there's a nice, very nice pen and ink drawing of Memorial Day and basically honoring the, our, our fallen soldiers and whatnot. And here's another one from 1925, uh, Bravehearts, Courageous Souls, Lasting Memories. And Elio's mentioned that this store will be closed on Memorial Day, Saturday, May 30th. The McCracken Brothers Men's Store also put a patriotic saying in the paper, and Elios, they didn't put one, they put two in. So they, they, they did a lot in those early days to, to show just how important we need yeah. to, for Memorial Day to be yep. observed. Now, in 1928, this is a date that's a little, a little shaky. The American Legion plot was given to the Legion by the city of Dillon. Now, as I looked at it, it, some people talk about 
it was 1926, some say 1927, but in the there was a column written by the Legion, and they talked about 1928, so I'm going to go with 1928. And it was a designated area for all veterans of all wars to be interred. In 1937, the American Legion Post number 20 held a twilight Memorial Day service on Memorial Eve, rather on Memorial Day. The program was designed to end just as the sun is setting in the West. Now, on a personal note, my grandfather, Walter Stom, was on the Legion's, the Legion's program committee for organizing that event. My grandfather served in World War I. In 1941, a new flagpole was erected at the American Legion plot of the Mountain View Cemetery. In 1946, the first Memorial Day services were held after World War II. Services were set for 7.30 p.m. at Mountain View Cemetery with the high school auditorium as the backup of location in lieu of bad weather. You notice they've gone away from having daytime services yeah. and church services to services right at the cemetery, yeah. and they are in the twilight. Yep. And you are taking a chance in Montana in May about uh, being rained out or in some cases snowed out i guess considering what happened a couple of weeks ago yeah it was a week what a week or two weeks before labor day we had yeah. a foot of snow yeah we we've, <laughs> we've got we went in, uh, in about 10 11 days it was a week we, yeah we went from <laughs> we went from spring to summer to winter and back to spring again yeah so and now we're in the hot in the heat of summer in 1953 on the front page of the Dillon Tribune the marching order of the Memorial Day Parade. And I noticed they didn't have a parade every year. No. Some, day, some years they did. Now, this parade featured the VFW Color Guard. Now, that's the first mention of the VFW Veterans of Foreign Wars. That's the first mention I saw of them and representatives of the American Legion and American Legion Auxiliary. But then again, this is, I'm going from 1946 to 1953. So I'm thinking something might have happened yeah. in those seven years in between. They also had the Elks Drum and Bugle Corps, and that was a feature of a lot of parades for a lot of years, and it's kind of disappeared. There was VFW from Dillon and Lima, and there was the VFW Auxiliary, plus Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Cub Scouts, and this is interesting, Civil Air Patrol. That was a representative of the 1953 parade. In 1969, Memorial Day services were set for 7 p.m. at the Mountain View Cemetery on Wednesday, May 20th. And on Thursday, May 30th, flags were placed on veterans' graves. Very simple. Yeah. As I noticed, you know, the services were very extravagant or very simple, but very heartful felt and emotional now here's one of my favorite ones in 1978 dylan postmaster bruce waters and you're old enough to remember bruce waters i think your parents would know him he postmaster they owned the oasis cafe okay. good good guy he delivered the memorial day address in his address he noted that memorial day now honored all of our dead not only our military dead but those who pioneered and built our nation we honor our mothers and fathers and all loved ones who have departed and then waters challenged dillon residents to step forward and build by dedicating themselves as a living memorial young and old rich or poor there is a way you can help Waters said challenge yourself to do your part if you are rich, use your resources. Help a young person through college. If you are poor, use your talent or labor to make our community a better place. He closed with, don't sit back and criticize. Step forward and build. Step forward and do your part. Now, that last sentence, that we need that yelled out loud right now, in these times, right now. Moving on, we're going to jump way up to 2003. Now, this is kind of a, a cool event because in 2003, the annual Memorial Day services began at 11.30 a.m. at the Soldier Statue at the Mountain View Cemetery. Retired Commander Sergeant, and let me, let me start over again. Let me start over again. 2003 is a special day. 
It's a special day. A couple of different things happened. And we're going to go back, or we're going to start at the beginning, and at 11.30 a.m. at the Soldier Statue at the Mountain View Cemetery, retired Commander Sergeant Major Marty Malisich was the speaker. The Southwest Montana Veterans Memorial made its debut. That's what I was trying to say. (laughs) The memorial, the brainchild of Dylan's Ronnie Lake, provides a permanent salute to the hundreds of men and women from our area who served in the United States military. Now, special guests were U.S. Representative Danny Reberg and Montana Lieutenant Governor Carl Oz. They were among the featured speakers. Also, 2003 marked the return of the Memorial Day Parade. Over the years, parades were a part of the Memorial Day observance, but the 2000 parade was the first in many years, and it was sponsored by the White Hat Coalition. And they continue to this day of yep. having a Memorial Day parade. It's not always a big parade, but you gotta, you got to hand it to the White White House, (laughs) the White Hat Coalition, because they are trying to keep that spirit of what Memorial Day is all all about, alive and going. And uh, what better than with a parade? You know, and one of the main people, too, that you see in that parade is the Montana Youth Challenge every year. They're in it. So that's a good thing to see that. Yes. So thank you, Stan Smith and the White Hat Coalition. And we're going to take another break, but then we're going to be back. And and speaking of Memorial Day, uh, Jeremy's going to uh, review the 2021 Memorial Day. Jeremy, you had a busy uh, Memorial Day weekend. You were traveling about. Luckily, the weather was nice, but you attended several of the events going on. Uh, How about a quick wrap up of uh, how Memorial Day 2021 yeah, um, this year it was pretty busy Memorial Day, actually. And, you know, it was kind of nice because uh, the weather cooperated. I don't know how many times as a as a kid, Memorial Day was always a rainy, soggy weekend. Or a snowy. I remember snowing Memorial yeah. Day, too. Yep. But uh, this year's Memorial Day, you know, it started out actually uh, Friday. Um, they decorated the graves. And is what they do is they go up there and for all the veterans that are in the cemetery, they put an American flag next to their grave. That was pretty neat to see because it's pretty much all volunteers that do it. And then, um, you know, Monday on Memorial Day, um, Chuck Thompson gave a speech up at the cemetery, up at Mountain View Cemetery. You know, and he kind of did the same thing we did. You know, he said most people anymore think that this weekend is just... A three-day weekend. A three-day weekend to welcome in summer. And he said, you know, that's not what it is. He kind of gave a quick rundown of what it was, which was kind of like how we did. And Chuck threw in a little bit of Chuck's humor where he said that, you know, the politicians deciding how it should be put it on a Monday so we could have a three-day holiday and not a fixed date. That's pretty good. That's yeah. pretty good. So it's always, you know, the last Monday in May. Again, so we could have that three-day holiday. So they could have the three-day holiday. Yeah. Yep. And like you said, you know, there's some uh, companies out there that actually give you Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday off. I have yet to find one of those companies. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, he gave a really good speech, you know, and then they had the uh, gun salute, you know. And one thing that most people, I don't know if you've ever noticed, on Memorial Day, the flags are at half mass. And they start out at half mast, then at noon, they raise it to full mast. I did not know that. Yeah, and that was something that they did up there. And then um, shortly thereafter, uh, the Veterans Memorial, the Southwest Montana Veterans Memorial, I think it was around noon, they had a rededication of the flags. Um you know, Ronnie Lake and those guys, they had a fundraiser where they were asking people to donate money or buy a flag of their choice to represent one of the branches of the uh, of the armed forces. I bought the Space Force flag because, you know, it's kind of a cool new thing. And U.S. Navy. You bought the Navy one. And, you know, they were lucky enough that the town came together and they have enough to cover them after these ones wear out. Well, another person came ahead and bought all the flags for yes. to put in the back room for yep. when the ne- they need to be replaced. They've already got them yep. ready to go. And then some people that donated donated money to for the upkeep of the park because I'm sure that park has a lot of upkeep. 
And, um, you know, the amazing thing about that park is it's a Southwest Montana Veterans Memorial, but it's for, you don't have to be dead to have a brick on there. You know, there's, if you go and you look at the bricks, there's names of people that have served in, you know, all kinds of the different wars throughout the years. Um, I talked to Skip and he showed me his brick. Um, and then, uh, Right after that, Stan Smith and the White Hat Coalition, they had a memorial dedicated, or rededicated, I should say. So this memorial set over by the post office at the church right across the street. Baptist Church, Baptist I believe. Baptist Church, I think it is. And it was a World War II memorial for those of the community that served during World War II. So what they did is they moved it. I'm not sure why they had to move it, but they did. Um, but it was in needing of repair and cleaning. So they had it repaired, cleaned, and brought back to its original form. And they put it at the Kiwanis Park, which is right next. Is it they part border. of it? Or it yeah, it's, it's all the same. It's all yeah, the same park. It's all the same. It's right across the street from Big Sky Cinema and McDonald's. They put it over there, and they had a dedication to it. This dedication, they had the Montana Youth Challenge with them, and I don't know what they call the platoon for sure, but they uh, do rifle drills. So they, you know, like when you see in the Marines where they spin the gun and do the salutes and stuff like that, these guys did a good five, ten-minute display, and it was impressive. Those kids should be proud of themselves. And I will put links in this video so people can watch this because I did do from beginning to end of Memorial Day. Um, but, yeah, very, very good show to watch. It was well worth going down there and seeing it. And while I was up at the uh, cemetery, Skip came up to me and he said, hey, they're doing taps across America. It's something new this year. I want to do it. Skip plays taps at all the funerals. You play taps up at that ceremony. Skip is a Vietnam veteran, um, and he's also Native American. And uh, he said, would you be interested? And I said, just tell me where to meet Skip, and I'll be there. So he said, it's 3 o'clock, taps crossed America. So 3 o'clock your time, you go out, you go to a flag, and you play taps on Memorial. It's something new that they're starting. So we went down to the Veterans Memorial, and we live-streamed it, and he played about a minute of taps, and it was very moving. That's great, and yeah. we're going to feature a little bit about that. We also have, we also have uh, uh, Mike Miller, who is going to read a, a patriotic poem that was actually written in the early days of Memorial Day festivities, yeah. the early, early days. And uh, um, it's it's interesting how it, it it changes, but it doesn't change. Yeah. And one of the things that that I noticed in all the research is everybody talked about, and you touched on it too, that you know we started out with honoring Civil War veterans. Yeah. Then it was Spanish American War veterans. Then it was World War One veterans. Then it was World War Two veterans. And we would rather not have to keep adding wars to the collection yeah. of honoring the fallen, but it, it is, it is yeah. what it is. And uh, we're so lucky and blessed to have those folks defending us yeah. a long ways from home, a long ways from Montana, a long ways from everywhere. And uh, that was the message that I got. It changed, but it didn't change. Exactly. The script, how they wrote the script changed. And we've talked about the flowery language they've used. But, you know, Bruce Waters hit the nail right on the head on how we need to behave. And he said that in 1978. That's yeah. when he gave his address. So um, it's it's just, it's it's very important that we remember. We don't have to like war. You don't have to like war. Nobody likes war. I was I was a romantic war fan until my dad told me that there's nothing romantic about war. He said, no matter what war movie you see, you have to multiply it a hundred thousand times worse before it becomes reality. Yeah, and you know, 
he he was right. So um, we w- this is this is very important. This is very important. I'm going to get off the soapbox. <laughs> and uh, but this was I mean when we you and I were were batting around ideas and what we wanted to do on um, Memorial Day was was a little ways you know it was a week or so away and it just dawned on us that hey yeah that's what we need to do it on yeah that's what we need to do it on and. Yeah. It's, and, you know, we're running a little late on it, but I mean, you know, we put a lot of work into these, um, you know, what you guys see is maybe an hour of us talking, but you know, there's a couple of days research into it. You know, we both have kind of hectic schedules and, you know, just, this something that we put out there for the people just kind of to let people know about what Southwestern Montana is through history. Yeah, and we're happenings. both. We're both history nuts, so yeah. it, it's nice. It's nice to uh, educate the folks that maybe not aren't sure about what's going on. Yeah. we have a ton of new people in Dillon that have chosen Dillon all of a sudden for their hometown. We do, and, and even those that have grown up in Dillon, you know, lots of them don't realize the rich history that's in Dillon. Oh, it's amazing for just a town that's a well. A little, I guess we have to go back to the 1860s when Bannock and Virginia City and whatnot. Yeah. Were you know Alder Gulch and all that because that's where it all came from. Yeah, start and we haven't even touched. We haven't even got close to touching about stuff. We've talked about the hot topics, the really interesting ones that everybody talks about. You know, the Labor Day plane crash. We've talked about Sawtooth Lake. We, you know, these things that people know about. Now it's time to start. We can start digging and finding out maybe the unknown stuff. It's like I did not know when I was doing this research that it was called the American Legion plot. I had no idea it yeah. was called. I just yeah. thought it was, you know, designated, but it's, and, and the, the soldier statue, you know, a couple of years ago, they had a great harvest bread fundraiser that raised enough money to put a new statue, yeah. up, yep. which is another example of the community getting together and, and making things better. Yeah, exactly. And you know, a lot of the stuff you see around Dillon, Southwest Montana veterans Memorial, that was just, you know, that was somebody's dream, and they put it together and yeah. they did it. Yeah. You know? And I mean, like the uh, new the new statue up there at the cemetery. You know, the other one. You know, weather took hold of it and ruined it. And you know, Great Harvest had a bake day, and they got their replacement. Where is the old one? I wonder. I don't know. I wonder that In too. Somebody's living room. Where? <laughs> I think it, it might have been beyond repair. Oh. Well, you, you know, we have harsh, harsh weather. You know, there was one of those pine trees that lined that drive um, up there at the cemetery, that last big windstorm. We got it twisted in half and broke it off. So that wow. gives you an idea how hard that wind can blow up there. Wow. Yeah. yeah well, it sits on a little hill. Yeah. It sits on a little hill, but uh, um, it's, it's, it's nice. It's, it's, uh, we salute you if you served. We do. We thank you. We do. You know, whether you served uh, in the military or whether as a police officer, I mean, or a fire, a fireman, uh, we we thank you because uh, you take care of us. Yeah. You know, and (laughs) the firemen, the policemen, you know, everybody that, you know, puts their personal safeties, yeah, off to the side. I mean, you do not realize what they do day in and day out until you start listening for those stories. Yeah. Yeah. And it's an eye opener. And they don't ask for anything. No. Nope. Other words, except better equipment to do yep. their job better. That's yep. what they want. Which is maybe another maybe we should look at that someday. Yeah. The the police and fire and yep. and ambulance. Yeah, the history of the Dillon Volunteer Fire Department, yeah. the history of the police department. I think we just found ambulance. another did you know think we South, did. yeah yeah best part is is the museum's open and we have access to their archives yes and which will open up more stories we can yes. get i mean except the only thing you know that i don't like about it mm. is because in in the past when i've been digging in the archives they've been digital archives so my yeah. hands aren't going to get dirty <laughs> but now we're going to be going down and finding the real live archives yeah the real live yep the papers and everything else but anyway yeah. We've kind of gone on a little bit past, uh, we, we get off on our, so we're entitled, aren't we? We are. Yeah, every once in a while. But we want to thank, we want to thank all the people that watch. Yeah. And uh, we want to ask it once again, you know, if you think of a, a topic you would like us to cover, something that you don't, didn't know about Dylan, then. Let us know. Yes. And, uh, and in closing, my thoughts are, 
you remember the greater one we did on AF greater one yes. of Dylan's early pioneers and leaders. We need to get a street named after him. We should. There's not, there's not a greater. greater Anybody's Boulevard. doing a subdivision around Dylan and you want oh, to name there's one like, of your streets, greater street. Yeah. <laughs> We'd yeah. love to see that. Yes. And we'll tell you how to spell it correctly. <laughs> so until, until we get together again, we want to thank you for watching. Uh, I'm Wally Felt. Jeremy Crawford, my partner in crime, and we're, we're good outlaws. And we'll leave you with this poem. Yes. Uh, good night. Good night. Softly, the south wind comes from haunts afar and brings its charm to waiting hills and vales. But now it is not redolent of war, of gruesome horrors and heartbreaking tales. For peace, with her fair white-lifted wings, reigns now unhindered, east west north and south the green spring turf onto the plowshare clings and cobwebs lace the brazen cannon's mouth no more are serried hosts of battle drawn no more brothers matched in bloody strife the tragic devastating war is gone and a new era dawns to stir the life of this great nation to uplift the race to forward freedom to enhance man, to give the lowliest a chance and a place for each to do the very best he can. Not in the realms of ancient Rome or Greece, nor in the idol of utopia can there be found or pictured states like these, or any more power of such benignant sway. But this brave land sprang not at once, full-born, nor found its heritage without a price, through battle's blaze, through toil and hate and scorn, our great republic had its glorious rise. Today, we meet to honor those whose scars and death were given that freedom should not die. Heroes of dark, blood-red, and cruel wars who won for us the final victory. Bring from fair gardens and the mountainside flowers for their graves touched with the south wind's breath that their blessed deeds may in our hearts abide and honor crown their sacrificial death. Fling out the flag. Let speech and music flow. May grateful hearts pause and the wealth of May be brought for tribute till the whole world know the impact of Memorial Day. Thank you for listening to Did You Know Southwestern Montana.